Excuse me, right? Dr. Reed. 
Okay, so we're going to have overview and vision by Dr. Reed first. Okay. And before, before he comes up, we just want to make sure that I just give a point of order. There is a time frame on uh, each particular item on the agenda. And we want to make sure that we kind of get to that time as close as possible. We do have our sergeant and the president if we should happen to go over. The minutes have been extended and they are uh, in abundance so that we should not go over in terms of uh, each presentation. If in fact they do go over, we do have our sergeant and our president to be able to kind of keep us on track and give us a fair warning if we start to exceed that time frame. We would like to do things decently and in order so we make sure we conduct ourselves appropriately so we can start and end, definitely end on time. Okay? Thank you.
they're in alignment with that. So we enjoy talking about that. We also, again, want to make sure that academic growth and development and the professional growth and development of our programs uh, align with what's needed to provide a great experience for our students. So those things are, are very critical and we're moving in the, in the right direction and with the right trajectory at this time. One of the things that uh, helps us continue to grow and evolve and expand is uh, financial support, philanthropic donations, and uh, purchasing tickets. That helps us continue to provide the resources necessary to educate our fellow Panthers as well as provide them the opportunity to develop as I was describing a few moments ago. Uh, we have great support of our university partners and, and our president, uh, Dr. Ruth Simmons. Uh, she is uh, our number one fan. She goes to as many competitions as she possibly can and is very supportive of what we're doing here. Uh, I'm very proud of, of the support that we are receiving uh, in, the, in the areas on campus, and as well as you all as, as a group, and also all of our fans and season ticket holders. I want to make sure that we are making you all proud by what we're doing, and want to continue to build on the legacy that you all established uh, during your time here at Prairie. <laughs> I'm ready for questions. Uh, so if there are any things you'd like to talk about, uh, I know that we have uh, quite a few athletes here. How, how many uh, football uh, alumni do we have today? Uh, any basketball alumni? Wow. I, I was a basketball player in college, and it kind of makes sense for me. Uh, yeah, we're probably baseball. I, I'm getting to it. I'm into baseball. Uh, I see Coach Riggins in the back of the room, and his ears perked up waiting for the baseball. So, uh, shout out to baseball. Yeah, baseball. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you all for, for coming out and uh, sharing time with us. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Track and field. Track and field? Yeah, there we go. Uh, were you a sprinter or distance? Distance. Oh, I even admire you more for <laughs> that, um, that, that fast. Uh, any other sports? I, I'm up here just to allow people to come into. I know y'all wondering why is he sitting up here? Have people come to Zoom. We have a wireless mic, so. Chuck is going to get started, I think, with a couple of questions on it. If anybody has any questions, uh, just let us know and we'll be the wireless mic to you. Okay? Good morning. Uh, Good morning, sir. Hello, everybody's here. Dr. Lee, um, I think the main focus of this meeting this morning is about financials. Um, a lot of us here are concerned about the financial condition of the athletic department. We need to know what is the status of it? What is the dollar amount of the deficit, if any, do we have? What has been done to chip that away? And how much of that has been done? And what are your plans to do, uh, to do this? Because um, from what we're hearing, we're going to help the whole. And for anybody, I think a lot of us would probably have to say, OK, we want to give to the program. But nobody wants to throw good money after bad. You see what I'm saying? So we need to know what down what the line, where we are now, what the deficit is, how much are we looking at? So we can start working towards the eliminating. But we gotta have some information from the department itself. Yes. And so some efforts and do calls and then things like that uh, things that like so would you like to address that? Yes, absolutely. Okay, it's hard because it was a, you know, it was a, 
question then it was kind of some commentary, so we'll, we'll so that the audience I guess will like you. Yeah. Okay, the first question is oh we'll make sure because this is the microphone. So the question that Brother Chili asked, Chili that's a good name, I can uh, he wants to know what's going on with the financials. He wants to make sure that the dollar amount that that is outstanding is taken care of because people are not going to want to put their money in a place where it's just good money going after bad. So he's understanding there are some issues with the budget, the sports overall, but we need to know what's going on with the money. Is that good? In response to that, I'll start at the, the very beginning from a foundational speak, uh, space, and then I can address specifically to what your question was. Uh, Typically, the budget that's allocated does not match the actual needs. So let me, let me give you a, a, a wide view and then narrow down. The vast majority of athletics programs run a deficit. Okay, the reason being is the revenue that's generated purely from ticket sales and all the other types of things don't necessarily align with the cost of operating. That's the first thing. The second thing is that gap needs to be filled in some way. That gap between budget and actual cost has to be closed. It is typically through philanthropic giving, meaning, meaning and, uh, donations, fundraising, ticket sales, advertising, sponsorship, all these different areas will allow you to close that gap. If there's a void there, that gap remains. Typically what happens is there's some group or at some place on campus, they reconcile the budget yearly by providing resources to close that gap. So that, that's in essence, industry standards. There, there are very few programs that are self-sustaining which is say they don't need any help from anywhere. Most of us, even the previous institutions I've been, ran some sort of deficit. The issue is, is to make sure that whatever that gap is can be covered through donations, advertising, all those different entities that we're putting in place to get that done. So you need marketing, you need sponsorship, you need advertising, you need philanthropic giving, i.e. fundraising, and typically you have a team of people that goes out and does it. I didn't say person, I said people intentionally. So you typically have a team that will go out and solicit, go and get sponsorships, go and talk to donors, go all over the country, recruiting people to close that gap. So, uh, if you go and look at industry standards, look at different conferences, most of us are in what's called a deficit spending mode, meaning there's some gap there that needs to be covered through the items that I spoke about. Yeah. So, so that, that's in essence how it goes. Right now, what, through research and since my time here, there's always been a deficit. Okay, and it's always been covered in some sort of way. And so that's what the process is going on now. But my view, we need to carry more of our own weight. In other words, doing what I just said, we need to do and have a team of people to do and do, th uh, do what I'm talking about and the things that I'm doing now, talking with you all so you can get a clear picture of how that works and how we can decrease that window. The goal is now is to begin to generate the amount of money that we can to close that gap. So, for example, the gap was around three to four million dollars in what was spent versus what was budgeted. Don't hold me to that stream of consciousness right now. But there was a gap there that you spoke about. How do we begin to, begin to close that gap such that now we can go to sponsors and say, instead of looking for $5 million, we're only looking for $1 million. 
are over 500,000. Some of the things, here's what here's revenue generated for us. Football is a revenue generated for us. That game that we played up the road, if you guys went there in November, that was to generate revenue for the athletic department. Uh, the games that we play on the road in basketball, we get guarantees for those games. Four, five hundred thousand dollars, sometimes six, seven hundred thousand, depending on how many you pay, uh, you play. That's a revenue generated for us. So all of these different components, even our, our baseball program. They went up the road and played. I think coaches are going up the road and play again. It's a revenue generated for us. It's, a, it's an experience, a great experience for our students. Great experience for our students in the context of being able to play with the Division I peers at the FBS level. At the same time, operations and moving groups of people here and there and providing very, very essential resources, academic development, professional development, uh, medical services, all these different elements has a cost. And we budget as best we can, but we're a program of 18 sports and about 400 plus athletes, which is very large. So I just want to give you that context. Yes, sir? Yeah, and, and I understand when you came here, you inherited that situation. So, uh, but. We look at this and say, say, say for instance, uh, the athletic department is like a general fund program. In other words, it does not generate a lot of revenue. But other uh, facilities are the other parts of the university of the enterprise that generate, that generate revenues to support others. The only thing that we're talking about here is uh, show a budget, you know, for this group here who want to give money. Uh, the budget that you're talking about, it will go a long ways if those dollar amounts are presented to, to these guys, these organizations. So we'll have an exact amount of figures say, okay, it's X amount here. We need to be X amount. Because this is why you have, you know, um, openness and clarity of purpose in terms of, of generating funds and going out and asking donations from corporate or whatever. So this is what we're talking about. Uh, I, I think a lot of us here would like to know, where do we stand? You know, dollars. If we provide that, that would go a long way. Absolutely. I would say to really close the gap, we're talking about a $3 million window. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting about the audience. I apologize, audience online. Uh, Three to five million dollars annually to get to that window. The uh, um, stream of consciousness again. Uh, there is a database that uh, is actually we have access in, in collegiate athletics to take a look at and see uh, where we are in relation to other spaces, other conferences, other schools, the whole nine yards, and. Uh, we can see, you know, who's doing what. If they're a state agency, we can see that. Private schools are difficult to get access to. At the same time, we're able to see where we are. So based on the number of sports, the number of student athletes and the like, we, we typically are at two and a half, three, four million dollars <laughs> that we need to fill that gap to really give that, ex that full comprehensive experience. Uh, with regard to resources, recruiting, uh, the ability to recruit, recruiting expenses, all those types of things. We're talking three to five million depending on inflation and what year it is. So uh, right now we're operating at $12 million or so. We'd like to get up to that 15 to 16 million in order to close that gap, and I think we can do great things in that space. So brass tax, that's basically what it is, roughly speaking, without doing the full research where we are now. But that's typically what's, how it's been trending over the last, uh, pre-COVID years, over the last three years. Yeah.
said, every ticket counts, every donation counts. Uh, I assembled, a, a, in essence, a two-person team to begin to be uh, out there talking with you all, talking to others about how we can uh, really move this deal from a financial support perspective so we can grow this uh, program the way we all want it to grow. Yes, sir. Dr. Reed, if we have always, and if it's, if it's clear knowledge that we've operated at a deficit for the last three years, or four years, there should have been a comprehensive plan to help get us out of that deficit. You, you can't continue to work and operate like that and only solely depend on, uh, say, for example, the alumni who pull a university out of the as whole as that is. I'm a high school coaching uh, coordinator, and I understand budgets and finances. And at the end, beginning of each year, we have a budget. And our budget is to uh, be managed in, in, in a proper and collective way where that we don't go over our budgets. Uh, and if we do, we come up with other ways and other plans to supplement those uh, additional items that we need, but it has to be a, a plan in place. And I think the question that we're having here is we haven't seen a comprehensive plan on how to uh, dig ourselves out of this predicament, and it's based upon we don't know how deep we are in debt in, in the athletic department. We don't want our programs to continue to suffer, but we don't want to send out blank checks if we don't know what we're paying for. And I think that's the consensus of the people here. We uh, are Prairie View, and we will always be Prairie View, and we have always uh, supported Prairie View. But if the amount of debt keeps getting deeper and deeper year after year after year, we are continually shooting ourselves in the foot. All right? So we have to have a plan. It has to be presentable to the alumni to know what we need to do to help you and these kids uh, not uh, suffer the way we've done uh, over the past few years. Now, in the past years, some of us have been 30, 40, 50 years. This is our first time hearing that the athletic department has been in a deficit for three or four years and for it to be that amount of money. I mean, we can't, we can't continue to, to operate like that unless we have a plan. No, I appreciate it. And uh, we do have a plan. And uh, I will definitely share that uh, once we refine it and, and make it publishable. So I'll share that with you. It's uh, unacceptable to run a deficit. We should be able to carry our own weight, and that's the expectation, and that's where we're going. Uh, I will say this. Uh, we can definitely do a better job. I mean, not definitely. We can do an awesome job and keeping you all informed of what's happening, okay? Uh, in as real time as we could possibly do. The other part of this is we need to make sure that we steward the monies as you all want them to be allocated and steward you in the appropriate way. So, for example, we created recently what's called Excellence Fund Accounts. So if you have an affinity or a relationship with a certain sport, you can give to that sport and you can rest assured, I'm putting my name on this because I created it. Every dime of that money you give will go to that sport, okay? So I, I can't speak to what happened 36 months ago, or whatever the case, but I can't speak to that. But what I can speak to now is each of our programs have an excellence fund account. Football, baseball, tennis, golf, pick a sport, all 18. You're able to give whatever you like to that particular sport 
and it will stay there, and that sport and that coach will be able to utilize it in concert with their sport administrator that's assigned to them, that money will stay there. So you have the ability to, in essence, earmark or designate where you want your dollars, your money to go. There's also a general fund that PV Athletics Fund, Panther Athletic Fund, that you can give and say, okay, it's at the discretion of the director of athletics to allocate it as he or she sees fit. So a big thing for me is integrity. Big thing. That's very important. So if we ask for your support in a certain way, in a certain area, it should be honored because you are the donor, you are the support. Uh, got a couple of questions uh, and that came online on Zoom. Uh, one is, are there any fundraising campaigns for aesthetics? Yes. Yes, there are some uh, campaigns that we have that are ongoing. Uh, I mentioned the Panther uh, uh, Athletic Fund, I'm sorry. The Panther Athletic Fund that uh, you're able to give to. Uh, you also have each excellence fund for any sport. So you're able to do our general fund, which is the Panther Athletic Fund, if you want to give to that particular uh, space and it, it will be used at the discretion of the athletic director. Or if you want to pick a sport, you're able to give to that sport specifically, it'll go into the excess account and then the athletic director, the sport administrator, and the coach will determine how uh, he or she will use the money to support uh, the student athletes and the team. Next question. Uh, why is your athletic GPA as high, higher rather than uh, the nine at other universities? What is the GPA for athletes at Purdue University? Why is that so much higher? Why is it so high? Uh, it's because it's not just about the GPA. Well, we, uh, we provide a great academic support service to our student athletes. Uh, they're housed. Uh, the academic services uh, building is actually in the Harrington Science Building. The facility is in the Harrington Science Building. Uh, there are computer labs, there are advisors there. Uh, we have tutors that come over and work with them. And we have a great emphasis on, on academics and education. Uh, we talk quite a bit about graduating but then we also talk about being educated. So being an educated graduate, and what we mean by that is we want them to be able to apply the knowledge that they, they learn or gain in, uh, in their professional career. So uh, our staff does a great job of monitoring our performance, and uh, that's a part of the competitive excellence plan that we have for all of our students. We want them to compete uh, in the classroom as well as in competition because we all know it's a competitive society and, and their professional careers are going to have to compete uh, once they transition uh, from uh, Purdue. Before you go, this is my part of the question. So what is our GPA for athletes coming in? we go out and recruit, what does the GPA have to have? Well, the, I don't recall the university's standard at this time. Okay, so the university standard is one level of it, and then we also look at uh, performance as well and make a decision on uh, how they will start. It's not a yes or no decision per se, it's what types of resources we provide, knowing what their performance has been and how we can continue to develop them as students. Right. I want to get closer to the mic, so I want to focus on my and get a question. So we have 3.2 GPA for athletes. No, 
No. That's what the university does. That's what the university does. What is it for an athlete to come in and not? Well, we use the university standard, or, uh, and it depends on if they come in. The university is the group that admits the students. Right. So we have the NCAA guidelines, we have conference guidelines, we also have university guidelines. So all of those have to be in alignment in order for that to happen. So that depends on the situation. Their transfers, their four-year interview transfers, their high school students. So it depends on who, what the profile of the student is, meaning what, are they a high school person coming to college, or are they someone that's coming from a two-year college? All those things are, are impacted. So those of you can, uh, that are interested can go to the website, and it'll, it'll, uh, it'll, break, it down. it'll break it down. And the reason why I'm asking is because we have, we may have an athlete out there in high school or a transfer that may not be at 3.2 today, but it may be able to help the program. And if we can provide the kind of guidance that will allow that to be able to come up, will they have to be in at 3.2 or can they work up to 3.2 in that first semester that they do? Which is what we used to do when I was All students would give the opportunity to be looked at, vetted, Evaluated and provide uh, opportunities to move their grade point average up or be able to access in the context of athletics, uh, access athletics uh, through continuous evaluation and, and talking to them. It's not a yes or no situation. You have to start, of course, with the university standards, and then we begin to uh, go through that process. You have, I'd like to defer to the, the lady here because you oh, yeah, had, yeah, yeah. okay. Well, we have, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Come on. Great. I'm a tailgate fanatic kind of person. Just wondering why I was here with tailgate and was free for everyone. Tailgate can have jumped from one price of off the chain another. Do any of that money go to athletics? How much of that come to athletic being that that's an athletic that is coming to? Do any of that money go towards athletics? Um, All right. For the folks on the line, this is uh, Brother Kenneth Jones. He's asking uh, about tailgating and the fact that tailgating has gone price wise through the roof. And we have a number of people that come and want to tailgate at every home game. But homecoming, we can get a lot of folks, but it's still quite high. I think it's $500. $650. $650. And, and folks are <laughs> So can you address that now? And you have a lot of I, I can address the athletics part. Uh, at this time, we don't get any proceeds from, from the parking. Uh, it goes to parking services and all that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We also have a question. Uh, Travis Weatherspoon, football player from back in the day. I might have to use that. I was more of a basketball player from back in the day. I remember telling I'm going to use that. sponsorships, uh, especially in this space. Uh, as you can see, we have a whole lot of walls and windows and spaces where we can put a lot of banners. So uh, sponsorship is, is something that we're driving really hard right now. 
Uh, we have some folks on board that want to do a lot of things, not only in the stadium, but in the, in the dome as well. So great, great point. We're, we're on it. All right, one more question, and we'll go to somebody else with the mic. Oh, Tom? All right, ask me first. Good morning. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. No, no, no. He just has to translate that thing online. My words are going to stay inside. That's why I was testing it. Uh, good morning, I'm Donna Weber, and I wanted to ask a question that's more specific. I have a fellow uh, Pantherettes here, and we like to get down to business. And so one of the things is you just mentioned, I don't know, I think that Greg has mentioned this too, but there is a lack of confidence with this athletic department, correct? Okay, and so just now we asked what the, what the GPA, that's a standard question, and you could give us the, what the GPA was that the next. I can give that to you. What's the problem? I can give that to you. It's 3.26. No, because somebody told you. I'm not trying to be clear. No, nobody. I'm no. going to come correct. You okay, know what go right ahead. I'm going to to come correct as well, because we, we need the information, right? With time out, like you don't know what happened 36 months ago, but you should be able to tell us what happened 12 months ago and 24 months ago. You know what I'm saying? You said you have a plan. What's the plan? There should be some aspects of that plan already in place. You know, it won't take six months to play a plan. You know, we're here because we're frustrated and we want to help play you be successful as it has always been. But,
send me an email. I'd be more than happy to talk with you. I think that's what we all have done. done I don't think we all have done that. And, you know, and I, I'm sure. But again, ma'am, I get maybe 400 emails a day. So, so I, I'm working as, as diligently and as hard as I can. But I, I no, I, I'm I'm with you. Our frustration, right? I'm, I'm with you. I'm, no, I get you. I hear you. Right. I'm listening. And, I, I'm and that's why I, I decided. That's do. why I decided to to do this, right. so I can hear it. So, I, I'm going to share this with. You. I said this earlier. Oh, I'm going to share this. I'm going to share this with. You. I got to stand in front of the thing. I'm a team, I'm a team player. I'm going to start with that. Okay. Uh, I don't know if everybody knows my history, but I'm going to give you the brief history. I'm the son of two educators, son of two PhDs, K-12 educators, son of two coaches, high school coaches. I was one of those kids that was on the sideline. I spent close to 30 years in this industry at every level of Division I. I take what I do seriously. I expect us to be excellent. I expect myself to be excellent. But the most important thing is the team. I was telling someone earlier today, Muhammad Ali made a, a Harvard speech to Harvard graduates back in the day. He said his part, he, he leaves. They start chanting. His poem, poem, because Muhammad Ali was known for his little poems. He comes back to the podium and stands up and says, me, we, and walks off. That stuck with me. I can't win by myself. I have to, have to have a team and a support group that's in alignment to make it work. And that's anyway. I'm sure you've done your research, you know where I've been. Every one of those groups has things like this. But at the end of the day, we're all on the same team. And we should be helping our teammates to do what's necessary for us to be successful. At the end of the day, no matter what my position is, point guard, uh, blocker, equipment person, it's all important. So I'm here to compete, to win, to educate, all of that. It's all encompassing. But it takes a team of folks that's pulling in the same direction. In this building, on the campus, in the community, alums, everybody. So yes, this course is important. Put it on the table is important. But at the end of the day, once we leave this locker room, we're all on the same page. I thank you for, for your time. I sincerely appreciate it and your hand. We, uh, we got a question that needs to be answered. I understand we do not have a soccer coach. A soccer yes, we do. That's a question. We do have a soccer coach. Uh, yes. Uh, we retain our soccer coach. What's today? Saturday. I don't even know what day it is. I'm, I'm working every day. Uh, on the city. So, uh, Coach, I'm having a tough time pronouncing her name. But uh, uh, Le Lessie, I think it's her last name. I apologize, Coach, if you listen to this. But uh, she will be here. She's already here, but she'll be starting on Tuesday. They're already trained. They're prepared to go. And uh, we'll be ready to rock and roll. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, 
and that's why we're leaning on church. Church wants to know, do we have a date or can you provide a date when we're going to get uh, an overview of the budget so we'll know how much money we need to raise? And that's your question. September 1st. September 1st. Yes, sir. That is it. Absolutely. All right. We are. Glasses on, I think it helped me look a little bit more professional. Okay. Right down here. Okay, um, okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Green. Uh, but what, I, what I'd like to do, because I, I think I had just a, a question or a couple of comments as well, I wanted to just uh, make sure that we definitely thank you for your time for being yeah. here and uh, wanting to have this particular meeting, but also we want to uh, make sure that you understand that iron sharpens iron. So with iron sharpening iron there, no one's attacking you uh, so that you can be defensive. Okay? So we want you to understand that uh, all of what's being said comes with a financial look. All right. So what we want you to understand is also when you look around this room and the people on Zoom, you have a million plus dollars worth of resources between Zoom and this room, okay? And, and, and again, this is just being said, look, when you uh, come into a meeting like this, we just expect for you to come prepared, ready to present from every angle and already expecting every situation that will come about, okay? So, uh, and, and the Panther Club decided to host this event because we're dealing with athletes from all sports, from every sport represented at Purdue. Uh, and so the Panther Club decided to host this event so that we would make sure that was a representation for each one of these sports to show that we are supportive of every sport. So what we are expecting is for you to come in with a full okay. budget, which okay. will be presented in September. Okay. We're expecting for the financials to be laid out on the table, showing us what is needed dollar for dollar, but also showing us uh, the plan and vision on how you expect to get there, what bumps may be in the road. Because we understand 36 months ago, that was a problem. We understand that you were brought in, but that was brought in with the intentions on fixing the problem. So we expect for that problem to be fixed you. Okay, so when we look at you, we say we're not getting rid of Dr. Reed and keeping him because of what he's doing and what he's providing. Anytime someone leaves a place, they either leave on their own free will or they leave because someone has put them out. Okay, we want to know that you, at some point, decided to leave on your own free will, not because we put you out. Okay, so, so our expectation is that you come in knowing that uh, you have that budget together, you have the bumps in the road with the expectations of these things may happen, the vision of how we expect to clear up all the financial mess that is going on. No, but not defensive, just listen because, and this is the reason why I'm saying this, is because right now today, when you came in to present, you knew there were gonna be a barrage of questions being asked, okay? So realistically, you should have come in with the secretary sitting next to you, writing down all these questions, so that you will be able to prepare and answer them for the next meeting. So we're gonna, we're hoping that you have a date set for another meeting so we can come back to the same forum, the same platform, and you can represent and answer all of the questions that we, we have asked today, that they'll be cleared up. The plan will be able to pull that together. You can step up, you can step up. Make sure the, the plan is to be able to do it without having to be approved. No, 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 no. This is the body. This is the financial yeah, budget. Yeah, but I want to... No, but what is the... By uh, September 1st, you want to have another meeting? We want to have it when you're, when, when, when you're ready. You set the date because we want to make okay. sure you're ready. And, and we want a body because these are the people that are financially supporting. You can't have a meeting with me and then expect me to get out everything you said there. Right, because right, you say you get 400 emails. You don't want to have... Have me answer 400 emails for you. No, you just no, want to be able to that to everyone. Okay, all right. So that, that's just how I think business should be handled. I got you. All right.
All right. Because if, no, I think that that should do it. Uh, if you don't remember these questions, we we'll, we got enough people here that will be able to jot them down. Is it is being recorded? Is that shared? And yeah, we'll get you that. It's being recorded. All right. I got one question for you, Lee. Okay. I'd like to know when you come back with your report, why we can't get money from our homecoming people that pay six or seven hundred dollars to park here on Prairie View campus, and all the money go to the police department. Don't make sense. I like to get an answer on that. Why you can't figure out some kind of way to get some of that money to go to that thing? Yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay, in case you even didn't hear it on Zoom, the question is related to. Uh, the monies that come in for parking that should go to the athletic department because the athletic department is driving that parking. So we want to make sure that that money for tailgating comes back to the athletic department. Okay. Yeah. Thank all you right. all. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. The, uh, all right. We're still on track of time. Uh, next part of the meeting is the uh, coaches, coaches' remarks. Excuse me, sorry, I missed something. Oh, okay. National Alumni Association. I'm sorry for that. Okay, so uh, for those of you that are still on Zoom, if you have anyone else that would like to join us during this next part of the presentation that is missing the first part, the meeting ID is 744 593 2314. Again, the meeting ID is 744 593 2314. Passcode is 000 464. Passcode 000 464. I know all of you have it because you're all on Zoom, but please share that. I just want to remind you again and please share that. Uh, at this time now, we'll have. Uh, Falls National Alumni Association President, uh, followed by the uh, coaches' remarks, and uh, we would like for any coaches that are still present to come up and present themselves. Then after that, we'll, be, we'll, we'll schedule a follow with the breakout session and lunch. Okay, Mr. Mark Falls. doing 
great things, but we're not under the same umbrella. Okay, this is not a picture to get you under the NEA. This is a picture about us working together. It's about a picture about us working together. The Panther Balance, the Panther Club, PV Athletic, and all those other clubs. There's some more out there. And I'm under the impression it's a lot of If they're not against us, they must be for us. And that's the old saying that I disagree with divide and conquer. If, if you divide, you're taken away. No, we cannot divide and conquer. We have to come together and work together. Work together and support this uh, athletic department. All right? I know the challenge is not for me to have because I'm sitting on all these committees, all these panels, all these boards, which I'm asking alums to do so that you can voices can be heard. Not with just Dr. Reed, but all these other panels, boards, and councils and committees that's going on. And so that's where our voices are heard. That's where our voices are heard. And so from the PP Athletic standpoint, since they fall under the NEA, uh, and they set up with a president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, finally set up just like the NEA. And so Athletic club is spearheading itself. And so you got to continue to give. So you can give to the athletic club, okay, that's set up, that falls under the NEA. And then when I meet with Dr. Ruth from the third, all right, I will share with her, share with her your concerns. And she's, she's concerned about athletics just as well. She's concerned about everything. Martin Stone got into problems. She went into the annual fund that we're supposed to be giving to every year. And she gave Archie Stone $100,000. We got to learn how to give first. That's, that's how we win our balance. We have to give and then hold this university accountable. Okay? Hold this university accountable. You're doing the right thing. And so uh, I would say next time we meet with Dr. Reed, Dr. Reed does not have to meet with all of us. You have a president of the Panther Baptist. You have a president of the Panther Club. You have a president of the Athletic Club. I think you can get more done just working with the presidents, the leaders, than the leaders can pass it down to you. And so as we move forward and work with this athletic department, and you know, and I'm, I'm just saying how we can work together with Dr. Reed. We told him our expectations today. Now he knows we should have got our expectations. Now we with Dr. Ruth. We already have our agenda on the theory. She knows what I'm expecting to hear, and I know what she's expecting uh, to hear from the alums. And so we got to work together. And so I support this effort. Uh, you guys know more about uh, athletics because uh, you ones have participated in the past and it's all about us working together. That's, that's what it's all about. It's about us working together. And, and it's okay we're alone, y'all. You, you, you guys focus on athletes. That's okay. We got a nursing chapter. They, fo they focus on nurses. I'm from the Johnson Space Sun alumni chapter. We have a tendency to focus on engineers. But imagine if we just all come together. You know, I, I, heard, I was watching Panther Baptist had a golf tournament. You know, I'm like, this not for the Panther Baptist only. There ought to be other alums supporting the Panther Baptist. We got to learn how to support one another. That's, that's the key to it. Come together and work together. And so as we move forward, and, and another thing that you all don't know, this university uh, have resource problems. They're not fully staffed yet. That's another thing that I will be bringing to Dr. Ruth's attention. She already knows about it. You know, you wonder why you're not getting from calls and everything. Uh, my pet peeve that I'm uh, getting with them, that's an old uh, trick when I used out at NASA. Stay so busy, so I go fill up my voice man. So when you call a voice man, you can't take get any more messages and stuff. You know, but the bottom line, they have a resource problem. Okay? From athletics to engineers, they, they trying to fill the void. And so we have to understand that. We have to understand that. But the key to, to uh, being successful is the alumni. And we benchmark, the NA benchmark with Texas a and during the pandemic. 
they walk in and give the president of the university $10 million every year. $10 million every year. I'm talking about the Association of Farm Schools. Now imagine we come in as alums and we give the president, and we can hold them accountable. We can hold them accountable. And I think we're off to a great start. If you look around uh, college sports, D1, it's football. It's football. You, th you, you think Alabama's going to get rid of that coach? You think Texas A&M going to get rid of Jim Moore? No, they not. All the money he bringing in? No, no, they're not going to bring him in. They, they're not, no, no. Football. Them coaches make so much money doing bowl games is that they spread it throughout all athletics and through the university. They didn't want football bringing in the most revenue at Alabama. They're not going to touch him. Football is bringing in the most money at Clemson. And so we have to do a better job. You're talking about sponsorships. You, to get sponsorships, you have to be 501c3. 501c3. A 501c3 organization. And some of the chapter clubs and classes under the NA, they're 501c3. They can stand alone. So we can go out. You know, we talk about Dr. B can do his part, get his sponsors. I'm working with a, a, a company right now. Call me. Got $100,000 in their budget. And they just want to set up somewhere at this university so that they can hire the engineers, the business managers. They, just, they got a $100,000 budget. And I'm working with that big department right now. They don't want a suite. The suites are full. They just want to be somewhere out here. They got money. But the reason why the NDA can address them is because we're a 501 organization. So we just got to learn, to learn how to work together. And I think everybody, everybody have ideas on how to get there. We need to share those ideas, and we need to agree on the best idea to get us to the top. But the PD Athletic Club is here under the NAA. You can continue to give, and then when Dr. Reed give you his budget, then you guys can decide. You guys can decide. You guys can decide how you want to give your money. All right? Uh, Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Any questions before I All right. All right, next we have Brother Albert uh, Dino Robinson to come up uh, and speak. Oh, you want to speak for them? I'll be fine. Okay. I'll repeat anything that they're not able to hear on Zoom.
So I just want everybody to know that we are always looking for health donations to try to get money to athletics. And we've been doing this since 1995. We've also have a, an adoption account we share that's over 600000 We have a personal endowment of over 100000 We've almost given Caribbean a million dollars. And we still say the same thing that we were saying back in 1995, trying to figure out where the money going, and can nobody tell you where the money going. We should not be in this position. And what people don't understand, we, we won championship, but we got to look forward. With the administration we got down here now, we won't be able to meet Jack Yates next year. <laughs> we have got to get serious about what we're doing. If we not, we're going to be able to, we're going to, we're going to win the Mississippi Valley. Yep. Now we're supposed to have an experienced football team this year. We got eight returning on offense, eight returning on defense. And it, it really looks bad. I don't know if we're going to beat anybody, but it looks bad. So this is what I want everybody to realize until the Alumni Association and all the different clubs start working and putting that money in the same pot, we're going to have the same problem. Thank you. Okay, so uh, thank you, thank you, Brother Robinson. Uh, Brother Robinson mentioned is that uh, to the people on Zoom that uh, there's a concern that the Alumni Association does not contribute funds to the athletic program. Uh, there are no monies coming from the Alumni Association to the athletic program. So uh, Panther Backers, PV Athletic Club, Panther Club, uh, is looking at ways in which we are, and we are concerned about receiving uh, monies that will go directly toward the uh, athletic department. Am I correct, Brother Arthur? Okay. Uh, so those things, uh, what we're looking for, we're looking to have addressed. So uh, there are still meetings being put in place to address those concerns. Uh, we also have Brother Austin that will come up as a representative of, a president of the Prairie View Athletic Club. Thank you, thank you. Good, still morning, good. We're, we're doing good time. <clears throat> uh, some of you all know me and know how I express myself, uh, not quite like Richard, uh, so I'm gonna be nice. Uh, but I am gonna be fairly straightforward. I am the president of the Prairie View Athletic Club. Prairie View Athletic Club was formed by Mr. George Higgs in 1986 and has been giving money to the athletic department since 1986. We, Prairie Athletic Club, take all the awards for All Sports Banquet and support the athletes based on the raffle we have on a yearly basis. What you just heard a while ago and some of you all on Zoom did not hear and I got to accept it. You got to accept those. All right. For those of you who did not hear Dino, Dino is concerned, and I'm going to address uh, the fact that we have monies that's coming into these universities that never gets to athletics. We have monies that is designated for athletics that never gets to athletics. It is not the fault of the alumni. So we're going to make a change today. Dr. Reed said a while ago, for those of you who are on Zoom, that we had the account set up uh, at the university for specific sports, and those sports should get all the money. Uh, what uh, some of you did not hear because he was on a wireless mic over there uh, was that the money that we gave as Purdue Athletic Club that, uh, again, Mr. Higgs set up in 1986, we gave $5,000 not too long ago for recruiting before I went on vacation in June. When I got back from vacation, Coach Wood, Dial asked me if we had given the money. The money had been moved. That is something that we cannot abide. Now, this meeting was set up to give an understanding of what we're going to try and do going forward, and we're going to do just that. Between Panther Backers, Prairie Athletic Club, and some 24,000 
Prairie View alum, whether you're in an organization or not, folks don't mind giving money if they know that money is going to be used where they want it to be used. Now let me be clear. Dr. Sims is a great fundraiser. There is a challenge out there right now where Dr. Simmons has challenged the alumni to match her $25,000 by the end of the fiscal year, i.e. August, the end of this month. And it's a great challenge. And I think she calls it finishing strong. Yeah. Finishing strong. And I want everybody, and look, for you folks out there on Zoom, get this word out. What I'm about to say is not going to take away from anything, anything or anybody that wants to support this university. But it is going to upset some folks who want to do things the same old way. So work with me here. We would love to see everybody give the money to our university because it's going to keep our university strong. The challenge that Dr. Simmons had is a positive challenge. Don't stop giving. That $25,000 plus the $25,000 will be used for every program at this university. Athletics may get some. And I'm saying that because I know this to be a fact. They may get some. Going forward, what I discussed with the president of the Panther Packers, the president of the National Alumni Association, and of course the Panther Club, because all of us are Panthers, whether you like it or not. We're not going to give the money to the university going forward. I talked to a guy by the name of Roland Austin, A U S T I A. I don't know if he's my brother or not. No, I don't know. But Roland Austin is in one of these groups that do fundraisers for athletics. And they specify they want the money to do the athletics. They may do a, a club event. Donna, help me out. They may do a house event. They may just have funds that people give. They put it in the form of a check and they send it to Prairie View and University. The money that you all are raising out there as individual groups may or may not get to athletics. Now, what the president of the National Alumni Association just got to telling you is, Prairie Athletic Club is going to take that over. It's going to be up to each and every alum, all 24,000. If you want to give to engineering, you can designate your money for engineering. If you want to give to Prairie View Athletics, we are asking you, and if you look at your own Zoom, my information, my email address for the Prairie View Athletic Club is on that Zoom. Write it down, make a note of it. I am going to have a call, a Zoom call, with all those groups in two weeks. In two weeks. It's going to be the same, same Zoom account. What we're going to do is set up an account, and we're going to have an account for every sport, all 18 of them, at Prairie View University. We're going to keep the money in that account. And this is the key. What you just asked Dr. Reed for today, we're going to provide on a monthly basis. The money's come in. If you want your money, your $1,000, your $5 to go to baseball, if you want your name to be attached to that, we're going to give you that account. We're going to be transparent to the folks who are donors. That money will sit in our accounts, being Prairie Athletic Club, National Alumni Association, because we are one of the one of the members of the National Alumni Association, i.e. 501c3. We'll work with Mr. Yant. Mr. Yant is the guy on campus that is supposed to distribute that money to the individual sports. Those are the accounts that Dr. Reed was talking about a while ago. The account that <laughs> Brother Dino was talking about, where we gave $5,000 and all of a sudden it was gone. It's not going to happen again. So if you want your money to go to the Prairie View Athletic Department, send it. We'll have that meeting with the leaders. We can get on that call. We have up to 300 people. Not even close. We're going to discuss how we're going to do it. We're going to make sure the platforms are there. We're going to make sure that you get a report. That is called transparency. That will create the kind of confidence that we need at Prairie View University. Brother going to step to the communication guy for all, most of us here. And he sends out what Jackson State's doing, gets on my nerves. But he sends out what Jackson State's doing, 
He sends out a Eugenie and a New and Orleans Grammy. Folks, we don't have the kind of communication that we need for the Purdue Athletic Department. We're going to have to develop that ourselves. And that's going to be a part of the program. We're not going to charge anybody. If necessary, we'll get some students. Based on the budgets that we set up, we'll pay those students to handle what we need to handle and improve the student life as well as get some transparency of what we're doing, right? If we have to take over the tubs, I've had folks call me at home because they have my home number asking about their season tickets. There's nobody in that ticket booth right now. That's ridiculous. This is football season. They're out there practicing right now, literally, right there on the field. On Zoom, can I see that? But it's ridiculous that we don't have somebody in that booth today. If we're going to generate money to get that deficit down, we got to stop talking and start doing it. So this is what we're going to do as old athletes, old graduates, old supporters. And when I say old, Purdue University is a HBCU. I mean this in the nicest way possible. We could not go to some of these other schools that's taking our athletes, taking our athletes, and build their budgets. Neon Dion over at Jackson State is doing some things based on Neon Dion. We have Bubba McDowell. We should be capitalizing on Bubba McDowell. Being here as the football coach of Purdue, we're going to do our best to do that. We got to market ourselves. We got to do what we need to do to get our quality athletes back here. And like Dino just said, if we don't get some good players, that's not to say we don't have a good team. I watched practice yesterday. The main thing they got to do right here is get in shape. And I understand that. I understand that as an old football player. But you still have to get the talent that is available to us at this HBCU. And guess what, folks? Black folks want their children to get an education and a family setting. This university, along with all the others, HBCUs are family said. We have to compete with the Alabamas, the Texas A&M, the Nebraskas. We have to compete with them, but we have an edge. We have quality athletes, we just need to recruit them. How do we recruit them? Go talk to them. How do you get there? You gotta have the money to go and that's my spiel. I hope I didn't upset anybody. If I did, I apologize. Charge you too much. Don't charge you nothing. Be upset. Be <laughs> upset. Yes, give your email address for those that's on Facebook. My email address? The email address that we're talking about is PV Athletics, not athletic, I'm put that S in there, dot plug at gmail.com. That's pvathletic.club at gmail.com. Alright? Question.
So you start, you start with the athletic director. You already started with this. You already started with the athletic director. Trust me, he knows. Then the next one is the university president. I will be meeting with her on August the 30th. So what we have to understand that there are only two affiliation agreements that have been signed. One with the National Alumni Association and one with the foundation, Grand UNM Foundation, who have built this sports complex. And so we've already made Dr. Reed aware of it. I will be meeting with Dr. Ruth, all right, asking her the same questions that you guys have presented today. This is how we hold the university accountable. But watch this, I'm going back to what I'm saying. All right, yeah, I know Panther Baptist is a 501 c but the university is going to recognize as two groups, the National Alumni Association and the foundation, because that's the affiliation agreements. And every president, they are not in a hurry to sign the affiliation agreement. And the reason why, because once it signs in, they've got to go to Texas A&M and go to Regents. So it's a lot of minutia to get it signed. Dr. Wright wasn't in no hurry, and Dr. Roof is not in no hurry to sign another affiliation agreement. So right now, it's going to be the National Alumni Association, and it's going to be the foundation. Another thing, let me say this here. One thing that I'm going to do, uh, Mr. Dino, is that I'm going to do a think tank. A think tank. We need, I'm going to do a think tank with the foundation, with Roy Perry and John Osby, and bring the leaders of the Panther Baptist, the Panther Club, and Adler, and we have a think tank, because what Roy Perry did, with this foundation, we have to be learning. That's what I mean by working together. I'm going to set up a think tank with the leaders of all these athletic clubs and see what can we learn from the foundation. Now, one thing I do know, when the foundation got started, I knew it cost $50,000 to sit on the board because they came to me for it. But I hadn't put my twins in college yet. And so we got to go back and look at how we're going to do this and let's do a think tank with the foundation and see how we can work best together. Mike, uh, give, give the mic to uh, Dino. Folks, what, what, that was the president of the National Alumni Association as he walked over to give the mic to Dino. I'll uh, be able to say, hopefully, what he just uh, discussed, and that is that he wants to get uh, all the leaders of these different groups together and have a think tank to make sure that we all get on the same page and make sure that what we present uh, is something that will be uh, positive for us and the foundation. But I say again, the foundation is one thing. What I'm talking about is raw numbers of folks who are giving money, and I want that money to go to the Prairie View Athletic Department. I don't care about the foundation, I mean, no disrespect, Mark, and I'm just talking to folks on Zoom that did not hear you. But we can learn from any and every situation, that's what you're telling me. But the bottom line for us is, we're going to assure ourselves as alumni that monies that are given, whether it's given from the backers, uh, uh, athletic uh, uh, the backers, or from the Purdue Athletic Club, or from any other group out there that wants to have a function to raise money, that money's got to go to the athletic department. So if we put it through our organization, then we'll do it. Go ahead, you know, you know just cut me off, you know. He's talking a little too long. First of all, I want you to know, like I said, we were established in 1995. The reason we're not a part of the NAIA is because when we were established, we were established to give money directly to athletics. Texas A&M wanted us to pay $5,000 for an audited statement in order for us to give money. We didn't see no reason to do a $5,000 audit in order to contribute money to athletics. So that's why we never joined the NAIA. So we do give money directly to athletics. First of all, I'm going to go right back to the root of the problem. They said, who is responsible? Administration and purview is responsible for the reason we're in the shape we in. We keep putting people in president's office that didn't know the job, didn't know exactly what they were supposed to be doing. So the first thing we, uh, we accomplished at Purdue 
We created an atmosphere of lying. We have created an atmosphere of lying. First of all, no disrespect to Mr. Paul, but this stadium was not built by the foundation. This was built by the student that the students at Prayer View and the university. We got to get things straight and quit telling everybody all these damn lies. And then we can go forward. I want to make sure everybody realize that we can have all the means of the brain we want, but until we get a streamline on how we're going to start funding this money directly to athletics, we're going to be in the same shape for the next five or ten years. All right. I will say what he said for you folks on Zoom. I'm saying that. We have to quit lying. This stadium that we are in today and that most of you on Zoom have been to was not built by anybody except Prairie View University students and the organizations that put money in here. Don't get me wrong, we got money from outside corporations and them, but it's not as much as you think. The second part of what he said, which was a little bit uh, more like Richard, and that is we have to get people in here who are competent and know how to do the job. Now, uh, Dino, you gotta listen to If I say something wrong, you can correct me. We gotta get people in these jobs that are competent. We have to get people in here who know how to hire a soccer coach before a soccer coach season starts. We gotta get to the point where we put our priorities on getting the funds necessary by not lying to people and telling the truth and making sure that money's given by donations go to where it needs to go. No disrespect to Brother Falls, the National Alumni Association, and he's absolutely correct that you can give money through Prairie Athletic Club, but the last thing, or the first thing you're going to say was the reason why they are not in the NAIA because they want to be able to give directly to the Athletic Department at Peru. That is why he set up Panther backers the way it is. Now, with the NIL rules that are here, we know we can do what we just got to say. We're going to set up our own account, and either we trust the university to put some money where it should go in these different accounts, and let me step over here and say this, or we will get with the coaches, and if you need a golf bag, or you need a bat for baseball, since baseball coaches in this room, We'll go buy it ourselves, we'll take the invoice, and we'll let the alumni know how much that that costs and who paid for it. Correct me if I'm wrong. We gotta quit lying, folks. We gotta quit lying. I got one question. Richard, I want to ask this. If you gave somebody $5,000, who you give it to? Now, why are you gonna quote that person for that $5,000 went to? I mean, that's simple for me. If I give you give me five thousand dollars, and I don't give it to the coach, somebody got this damn money. If I give it to you, I'm gonna use money for that money. If I give it to you, that's all I'm saying. I make sense. Y'all make something like it's not complex. It's something else. You know, talk to the person who gave me the money for five thousand dollars. That's something. All right, that was Richard. <laughs> now I know you folks didn't hear him on Zoom. Thank God. <laughs> Paraphrase this because Richard shares the heart and said, Look at it. These are the people in the room. What he just said is that we gave $5,000 to football to go and recruit, and that money was not used for football to go and recruit. What the hell happened to that money? Go to the person that you gave the money to and find out. Let me tell you what I was told because I didn't. What other I'm somewhat diplomatic, but not too it was used to pay down outstanding debt. Let me say it again. That is not the responsibility of alum giving to athletics to do what they need to do currently in athletics. We got to recruit, we got to buy equipment, we got to do different things, buy socks, shoes, that 
the university may or may not fund because it has other obligations. And so if you are a supporter of athletics, we're going to make sure that money goes to athletics based on what you want and then let you know where your money went. Pastor Baggers are nodding. Pastor Clark is nodding. I'll let the president go there. Yeah, so to paraphrase, we just want to make sure that monies are not being misappropriated. Very simple. Monies go where they should be. Anytime that a check is written for a specific cause and is then turned around and given to for support or used for another purpose, it's called misappropriation of funds. So I do not want that to happen by any means. And that's coming from me, the president of the Panther Club. Um, at this time, we have a question. I have a question. Okay. And then right after following these two questions, we will get we will be ready to hear from uh, our coaches that are here. Okay, good morning.
showing how we're going to, as Greg mentioned, uh, raise the money or where the money's coming from and where the money is going, outlining and detailing that to everyone and sending uh, our state tax statements and things of that nature. I'm asking or suggesting that the next phase will be phase two is to find out where those monies have been going. And that will um, take the legal, and we have some, some attorneys that can look into that for us. Because as alumni, right, we should be enhancing the program, not uh, trying to put a bad day over a wound. Right, what we're doing now, because we want to help the programs out, is really putting a band-aid on our wound. Because we should have been, it should already been funded. Those millions of dollars should already been there. And so it might take an attorney, just like we had the, uh, what is that, the office, um, what was that uh, grant we got, or not grant, the money we got, Office of uh, Justice. We got so many millions of dollars about 10 years ago to do, get, you know, rebuild buildings and things of that nature, nature because they found out that Prairie View wasn't given all the money that we were supposed to be given. Now, I, I apologize because I can't remember the, the name off the top of my head right now. That was the Puff Fund. When we filed suit against the state of Texas. The Puff Fund, we filed suit against the state of Texas. Texas. Prairie View was not given that fair share. Well, Prairie View was not given our fair share of Nate Charles. So, exactly, I think that's what our next phase is going to be, going to have to come through. Because that's the only way that you can show people that you mean business. Okay? We, we just, Torrance, and we're, we're just like trying to put something together. And as I mentioned to him, uh, Dr. Reed, we're professionals. So we shouldn't be scrambling around here like I, with chickens with our heads cut off. Like we don't know how to take care of business. We know how to take care of business. We're directors, lawyers, attorneys, doctors, whatever. Teachers, principals, all of that stuff. We're professionals because we graduated from Prairie View. So we should be able to get a plan together. Like I told you, and it don't have to take 12 months, 24 months, 36 months. We should have been had a plan. And the ADs before him should have had plans. And before and before. But anyway, my, my suggestion for phase two is to have us legally represented as prayer group. The, the people here can't do it, but we can do it as an outside alumni. Okay. Thank you. Um, now, uh, still want to thank the uh, people that are here on Zoom. We are now to 42. Uh, yes, no Zoom at this time. Great number. We now want to uh, get ready to hear from our coaches. For our coaches' corner. Uh, hey, you got four year girls, right? I have one question. Oh, no, you did. I'm from the Dallas area. I'd like to know about recruiting. I have not seen a recruiter up in Dallas area, we have all these happenings, all these schools up here. We talk about trying to get some help out here. For years, I've been fussing about coming up here recruiting. Are we afraid of North Texas area up there to recruit? Because Texas Southern, your Jackson State, your Grandin, they come get out like kids from up here in Dallas. And they come right out of here and pray us. Why we cannot get someone to come and just go around to the schools and talk to the kids. They don't want to come. But if you don't ask me to come, I can come and I'm going to the courthouse. So, do we have the recruits? That's recruiting. So, the question that's I being know. asked relates to recruitment in outside areas other than just the surrounding areas of Prairie View, uh, such as Dallas, and other outlying areas, just for the members of Zoom, they will hear the question. Uh, I'd like to respond to that. Um, is it on? Okay, I'll just talk about I can I can respond to that. Back when uh, Coach Dooley was head coach, football coach here, I challenged him and Elisa Peek when we had those, those uh, uh, meetings at uh, David Buster's on, uh, on Richmond when we meet the coaches back then. 
And I specifically challenged him as to why was he bringing so many, uh, uh, providing so many of our scholarships to mostly boys out of Louisiana. That was incorrect. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I was saying, no, let me finish, don't, don't interrupt me, let me finish, but he, he straightened me out on that, okay, but when you look at the roster, just like the gentleman said, that wasn't too many uh, recruits, there's some recruits, but not enough, Texas has a wealth of talent, football talent, now, to underscore that, when I stepped outside and talked to Dr. Reed, we had a lesson here a few weeks ago, where the coach of Jack Yates in Houston, contacted the police department here at Prairie Indian University about a game with Dallas Carter. Now, folks, can you imagine what the recruiting uh, uh, opportunity that would have been? Dallas Carter and Jack Gates playing right out there? You know what the police department here in Prairie Indian University did? They, uh, they charged him cents. Now, guess what? I called the coach and athletic director at Jack Yates. The head coach of Jack Yates called me back. He confirmed it. So I, what I did, I called HISD police department, talked to a captain there, and asked them about the charge, that particular charge for a high school football game. He said, ridiculous. So I called Cy Fair Independent High School Police Department. I asked them about it. They said the exact same thing. So now, we have so many things undercutting our recruiting, and that's why I was telling Reed when we stepped outside, what the hell's going on? Okay, so the people on Zoom, the question is also asked about what the answer is given to that they uh, tried to look at different avenues to bring recruitment into Prairie View, and one of the obstacles, uh, as mentioned as an example, is Jack Hayes and Dallas Carter's game here, and the uh, police department putting up barriers because the, there was a financial constraint of eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand. Okay, eighteen thousand dollars for one high school game was right a, out there. Was causing a ridiculous amount, which prohibited them from having the game here, which could have been money raised yes, here, yeah, they the the as well now. as recruitment, potential recruitment for our uh, athletic program mm -hmm. to actually recruit those athletes from those particular schools. Uh, so now we will ask uh, uh, one of our coaches to come up, uh, just for point of reference, Bob McDowell, uh, head coach for the Prairie's football team, is unavailable at this time for obvious reasons because they are now in the middle of training. So he will not be able to speak at this time, but we do hope to get him back on a later platform, uh, possibly when Dr. Reed comes back to uh, clear up a lot of the unanswered questions. But at this time, we're going to ask our uh, baseball coach to come up and uh, present himself, as well as uh, talk about the concerns of his uh, program, his needs, and plans going forward for baseball.
better. Um, guys are graduating. Um, guys are, are leaving here with, you know, with degrees and, and good jobs. Uh, we just had Xavier Jefferson just took over the, the communication department with the Buffalo Bills. Um, he was a baseball player here uh, for, for five years. Year. So we're doing big things. As far as what I need, you know, that's something I was just talking about, you know, in private. I just don't want to put it out there like that. Um, because we always need things um, you know, to always get our, our human athletes uh, when it comes to um, the, the analytics, when it comes to technology, all the things that we need to Better, to get better and to stay on top of, of our game. So, <coughs> yeah, it's all this thing that we do. Do we have any questions? Any questions for the baseball coach? Okay. The okay. view is the way you go out of the group. Okay. That's uh, 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 just going to be honest with you. I haven't had a recruit but in the past five years. So pretty much uh, everything that we do is all on my own and my coach is on. Um, we just happen to know a lot of people. I mean, unfortunately, we've been good with recruiting as far as uh, for the past three years. Um, we end up losing uh, like about 10 guys uh, from either graduating or we lost two to the court. Our ace pitcher we lost to the portal, and our best hitter we lost to the portal, um, but we replaced them all. Um, we have over, we got 46 guys coming in for the fall. Uh, 21 of us new, and out of those 21, 13 are pitchers. So I'm, I'm carrying 22 pitchers um, on this 46 man roster right now. Um, so the recruiting has been pretty good. I think good for us. Every 12 new pitches, I think nine of them are transfers, two for transfers. So we're actually doing a, a real good job with uh, the recruiting piece. Uh, but unfortunately, it's nothing I can do about it. I just do what I can do with what I have. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, thank you, Coach. Uh, yeah, thank you. Take the tour, you're going to 
a single every day. Alright, so money helps support uh, bodies into the stash. Um, it's always great. Another question. Yes, sir. Yeah. And this thought process about money and all that, so when you talk about scholarships, how many do you have? I mean, it's just a question because nobody really knows all this. How many scholarships do you have? And the gap that you need to talk about money, you got 10 scholarships, you need 25. So that's the kind of thing I, I like to know. So when we talk about how much money in your budget is $50,000, you need $75,000. Right? I don't know what it is. So the NCAA purchase for a baseball scholarship is 11.7. I'm actually getting 7.8 uh, scholarships. So it's not a full amount. Just like I said earlier, we find a way to figure it out. Uh, I just do the best with what I have. Problems with milk. Um, you just have to find ways. What do you feel is a barrier? What do you feel is a barrier to why you're not getting other, like, some scholarships? I never ask. Okay. To be honest with you, I never ask. Uh, whatever they give me, that's what I take. Um, it's not like they don't know. Okay. Right? So um, I just find ways. Um, a lot of guys who bring in. to take uh, advantage of the COVID years, uh, the transport board. Um, so it's a backup of, of decent baseball players out there uh, that we have a, a chance to get. So uh, just we got to hustle a little bit better, a little bit more. We want to get the guys that we want. So uh, we're here, my, my coaching staff. It's not a problem with us, but we love it with passion. So we're able to do it. Assistant softball coach gonna come up and speak. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Coach Joseph Lane. I'm the assistant softball coach here at Prairie View. I've uh, been a part of the program for I think it's my 12th or 13th season. Uh, proper protocol having already been established. Just wanted to address you this morning. First of all, I tell you thank you for your past, present and future support of the softball program in the absence of our head coach, Vernon Bland, who's actually traveling right now. Uh, currently, we are the reigning 2022 SWAC champions. This is our, our second SWAC championship. Our, our second SWAC championship in the last four years, uh, third total. We have actually secured the championship this year with a team Heavily uh, sophomores who simply did not get a chance to play early uh, the freshman season. So when you look at our record at the beginning of the season, we started out 0-19 uh, because we had to grow on the field. So we slowly uh, got momentum started our arms growing and we were able to capture that championship. Um, we had uh, 15 of our 20 student athletes to be on the Auswag Academic team. We have graduated 25 uh, student athletes in the last four years. Uh, we currently have a, a team GPA well over 3.0. Uh, on paper, we should do something that we have not been able to do in the history of this program, and that's repeat. Uh, we have currently uh, Vivian Figueroa, who is ranked nationally uh, in Madden Average. I think she is number six, uh, and that she dropped from number two when we had to play the reigning champions of uh, Oklahoma University in the uh, uh, Norman region. So we returned a, a fairly young but strong and talented program. We're looking forward to continued success uh, and continue to grow uh, and represent this, this university and the program well on all levels. Uh, we have Currently been invited to participate in uh, one of one of only 
two HBCUs invited to participate in the uh, top 25 national rank tournament in February. I think open week of February, which we're trying to secure uh, an opportunity to go and compete at that level. One thing we're, we're trying to do as a program is uh, teach our student athletes that we are not we are not limited by the goals that we can immediately see in front of us. We're challenging our student athletes to be bigger and better than the SWAC. Uh, we're not intimidated by any of the mid major We're not intimidated by the Power Five. We constantly uh, put Big 12 schools on our schedule to show them that we're just not, I'm sorry, we're just not a small program. We are a program and we deserve to be where we are. So with your continued support, support of the administration here, the university, uh, we will continue to grow. And that's our goal to take this program to the next level by, again, repeating and continue to go further on uh, in the South Island uh, arena. Thank you. All right, thank you. I'm 